Hello everyone. This video is in continuation to the chapter uh, reproduction in flowering plants, where we were discussing about the male part of the flower. We have discussed about microspore and its structure and also microsporogenesis. Now here we are going to start up with the megasporangium structure of megasporangium and ovule, or you can say we are going to start up with the female part of the flower. Now starting up, I'll just uh, give you an overview. The female part of the flower is known as as gynosium also called pistil now if we see the if the, if we see the structure of gynosium gynosium basically it has this uh, structure and which is placed over this receptacle or thalamus now this part of gynosium is called the stigma is responsible for receiving the pollen during the process of pollination this is style we have a ovary and then the receptacle here stigma is re responsible for receiving the uh, pollens style is responsible for movement of i'll just make a, a pollen and show you it's responsible for movement of this pollen tube towards the ovule or for the for, for the process of fertilization the style it can be of two types it can be hollow or it can be solid i'll just a hollow style will have cells which are arranged on the periphery and from where the pollen can pollen tube can easily move and in a solid style the cells will be arranged inside the you know the whole style like this here the pollen tube needs to make that way to move inside down to the ovule now next is the ovary ovary it contains the ovule many ovaries ovaries can have single ovule it can have, have multiple ovule the most common ovule which is found in ovary uh, which is found in plants is anatropous ovule which we'll be discussing here in this video now here with the help of this placenta ovary wall has this placenta and with this placenta the ovule is present here in the ovary okay so this is an anatropous ovules which faces downwards now there are multiple you know divisions of flowers on the basis of arrangement of pistil a flower with one pistil is called monocarpillary a flower with many pistils is called multi carpillary a flower in which okay uh, one pistil is there it's monocarpillary many pistils it's multi carpillary okay if they are free it's known as uh, apocarpus condition if it, they are few syncarpus condition now this is about the gynosium and the arrangement now we are going to start with the structure of mega sporangium I'll just make the structure here so that it's easy for us to uh, correlate. So when we discuss the structure of megasporangium, megasporangium uh, or ovule lies inside the ovary. So this would be the wall of ovary. The placenta attaches to the wall of ovary and the ovule it will we have this inverted ovule in case of angiosperms we have this protective coverings moving inside like this now i'll just label and simultaneously i'll explain so here this is the ovary wall This is the placenta with which this ovule is attached to the ovary wall. Here this tube is called funicle. 
this tube funical now in angiospermic plants i'll make it with a different color in angiospermic plants this wall where the funicle is attached to the placenta it extends over the ovule like this and this extension is known as raphe and the point where it attaches to the funicle this is known as hilum now after that the next part we have these protective coverings called the integuments generally the angiospermic ovules they have two integuments so are known as bi integumate bi tegumate sorry or tegmic bi tegumate okay then here the inside this inside the ovule this part is the broader part and here we have the opening this broad part is known as chalazal end or chalaza and this opening or the part is known as the micro pilar end or micro pile then we have this chalazal end and the micro pilar end more in most of the ovules the pollen tube which we had made here is going to enter inside the ovule from this micro pilar end inside the ovary this broad space it is filled up with diploid cells known as new cellus here these are all diploid cells and is and the new cellus is responsible for providing nourishment to the developing embryo this new cellus which is present here will be responsible for providing nourishment to the developing embryo and in some of the uh, ovules it is uh, you know in a very large amount in some it's in a very less amount or small amount so we'll just label it this is new cellus new cellus and the cells of new cellus are diploid in nature diploid cells are there this new cellus if it is less the condition is known as tenue nucellate tenue nucellate if it's more in amount it's called as crassy nucellate okay so if the amount of the uh, nucellus is less it's tiny nucellate if it's more it's known as crassy nucellate now this nucellus which is uh, uh, which is the uh, mass of diploid cells which is present here is responsible for providing nourishment to the embryo here in this the last you know the cell which is present at the edge here is now going to enlarge most of this nucellus is used up is used up in the development of embryo but in some of the fruits it is persistent those are known as perispermic fruits we'll be discussing it in the in our uh, videos for fruits now the last cell enlarges to form megaspore mother cell which is also diploid in nature which is also diploid and will undergo meiosis so this Pa uh, this cell which is present at the micropylar end is going to now enlarge to form the microspore mother cell and um, uh, sorry megaspore mother cell as in uh, development of pollen we had done that the microspore mother cell was responsible for the formation of microspores or the pollen grains here this megaspore mother cell will be responsible for formation of megaspores and this formation will occur by the process of meiosis so this was about the uh, female reproductive part where we have discussed about gynoecium its types we have discussed about the structure of ovule and its formation in our next video we'll be discussing about megasporogenesis or formation of megaspores thank you